Hey guys, in this video I'm going to go through with you and show you how I 3D print and assemble the Guardian Sword from Breath of the Wild. Um, this is a cosplay prop and it's one of the first props that I made uh, when I first got a 3D printer. So I didn't design any of these 3D printed objects. Uh, the original design was actually published by Adafruit. I will leave a link in the description of this video if you're interested you can go check them out. And it has a very detailed step-by-step -step tutorial guide on how to uh, 3D print the parts needed, uh, the electronics that you need, the screws that you need, and the hardware. And it is a very detailed guide, so I highly suggest you go check, check that out. So the first step is to 3D print all of the blade pieces. So I am printing these on an Anycubic Cobra 2 Max because it is a large format 3D printer where I can 3D print the blade pieces. Um, Instead of having to cut the blade pieces into multiple pieces to fit onto a smaller printer like the Bamboo Lab printers, um, I use the Cobra, any, any Cobra Max 2, and I am able to 3D print the blade pieces in essentially far fewer pieces. So each half of the blade is printed with three different uh, pieces. So in total, there's two halves containing three pieces, so six pieces in total. Now to combine the blade pieces, I use this product. It's called 3D Gloop. Uh, if you haven't heard about it, please go check them out. I used to use CA glue and an accelerator, but I learned about this product on social media and I, I decided to give it a try. It's essentially a, a glue that's made specifically for PLA. So it binds, uh, it, it chemically binds the PLA in a way where it, you know, after it cures, it becomes a, a very strong bond. And what I really like about this product is that if you get it on your hands, it doesn't leave like sticky residue or anything like, like super glue or, or CA glue would. The only real downside is it's always out of stock. So if you order it now, it, it does take some time to get to you because they're always out of stock and they're always behind on their shipments. But I do highly recommend them if you use PLA. Uh, the next part here is I'm 3D printing the black detail pieces here on my X1 Carbon. I have a file on here where you can essentially scroll through and print whatever whatever detail pieces you need. And these black pieces are, uh, they are glued onto the sword halves once they are assembled, just to give it that, you know, 3D look. So these are the black detail pieces when they come off the printer, we keep them in a box here. And these are just other materials that you'll need to assemble the electronics. Um, you need a soldering iron, some solder, <clears throat> some wires. You also need a LED strip. Again, all of this is detailed out in Adafruit's guide to build this. The electronic components, uh, the battery, the trinket, the microcontroller, you can buy these directly from Adafruit's website. You can also buy them on AliExpress or Amazon. And so for those of you who may, you know, be overwhelmed with this stuff, if you just follow the instructions that are on Adafruit's website, it's actually pretty straightforward. Um, this is coming from somebody who has no experience with electronics or soldering or anything at all. And I was able to complete this. So don't be overwhelmed. Just follow the guide step by step and you will be able to complete this no problem. So here you kind of just have to follow the wiring diagram and everything and once all the electronics are set up, um, you go into Arduino here and you copy and paste the code that's provided for you. And this code essentially tells the LEDs how to turn on and the colors of the LEDs, you'll, you'll see in a little bit how, how those come out. And so once you get the code onto the trinket, you just plug in the battery, uh, you, you turn on the switch and you'll see here that certain LEDs are colored orange and, and the others are colored blue. The next part is I take a heat gun and I sort of just heat gun the, the, the two hats because there's some stringing and imperfections uh, after they come off the 3D print plate and the heat gun kind of just gets rid of a lot of those wisps and imperfections. And this also helps with putting on the black detail pieces into the slots and the crevices. So this is just old footage where I was using the uh, CA glue and the accelerator here to attach the black detail pieces. So the accelerator is a spray where you essentially would spray onto the black pieces here and as you put it onto the glue it kind of accelerates the curing process. So instead of having to wait 
once you put the piece on to the glue with the accelerator on it it cures very very quickly maybe within you know five to ten seconds so these are all of the black detail pieces that go on each half of the sword here Next step is to attach the two halves of the swords with machine screws. Um, I use a power drill. You don't need to use a power drill, but I, I highly recommend that you do use a power drill. It does save a ton of time. And I like to keep the LEDs on while I'm screwing the screws in just to make sure that everything is working properly. And so here is the final product. Um, you can hold it, you can swing it. Um, there is a 2200 milliamp battery a rechargeable battery at the hilt of the sword and the leds come on as you can see in this video uh, there's a delay that's kind of how that's how the coding was when you in the arduino program and when you put it into the microcontroller on the guardian sword this is how the leds come on so here is a video of it in the dark turning on in the dark you can kind of see that the delay so the next step is shipping this out to the customer. Now USPS doesn't handle these packages with a lot of care, so I try to include as much packaging and support material um, when I pack package these into the boxes. So I try to add support on the seam pieces and the pieces that were glued together just to add a little bit more rigidity to it. And they are packaged into these custom boxes that I buy from Uline and they are sent off to the cust customer. So again, this is the final product. Uh, if you're interested in learning how to build this, the, the link to this guide will be in the description of this video. And I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you in the next video.